It just clicked. Tom Selleck. Lee Van Cleef. <laughs> angel eyes. Uh, Look at those little angel eyes. <laughs> they're green, but... Uh, remember? Remember that's what Tuco calls him? Uh-huh. In the, the Good, the Bad, and the Ugly? Remember right. that? Uh -huh. But you're good. I'm just saying you look a little bit like uh, Lee Van Cleef. <laughs> <laughs> oh, look at those little angel eyes. All right, uh, getting serious here, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Um, so much is going on. Tell me about this new book. You guys, how many books do you publish a year? We do about 12 to 15 books a year. Um, you know, we keep, we keep it under control that way. We, otherwise, we don't have enough marketing bandwidth to make them successful. Now, this one, I thought of you. I had to bring it in because this is really inspired by what you talk about so much on the air. And uh, Police State USA, this, this kind of tells it. It's very up to the moment right now and all the technology that's being used, surveillance technology, drones, the whole nine yards. And as you say, you know, we're not heading toward a police state. We're there. And that's what this book is all about. Written by Cheryl Chumley, who uh, works, works for the Washington Times, great reporter. And uh, she did a great job with it. And, um, you know, so it's not out yet, officially. I'm So <laughs> don't don't try to buy this today at Amazon. Well, that's good because I, I uh, <laughs> we sell a lot of your books at InfoWarsStore.com because uh, they're all so good. And I, This one you'll, you'll love. I want to read it and I want to carry it. So I want to tell Weldon I want to have this book and I want to... Who is doing your covers? Man, that has got to be one of the best covers I've ever seen. That is a very dear friend of mine, my son-in-law, who is our, our uh, creative director at uh, WND. Does He's world-class. I, I think so, but I'm a little bit biased. No, I mean, I look at book covers. If I was in a oh, bookstore. He's amazing. I think our covers stand out, you know, uh, at any trade show you go to or anything else. Well, you've had a lot of New York Times bestsellers. The highest percentage of any publisher in the world, yeah. 10% of our books become New York Times bestsellers. That, that's like off the charts, okay? If if you were publishing, like Regnery has a very good... You've also go, ghostwritten a lot of number ones. Yeah, but we don't want to talk about that. That's right. Air. No, no, I'm lying. It's not true. <laughs> it's a conspiracy theory. You're dangerous. No, no, no. You're not only dangerous to the establishment. No, you didn't tell... I, I, I've known that for years, but I you didn't tell me shut up. Uh -huh. Okay. Actually, Joseph Farron never wrote anything in his life, <laughs> right? <laughs> I was I collaborated on that's the right projects. That's yes. right, big projects. Yeah, big projects. Well, you know why? Because you love freedom, and freedom's popular. I mean, how could I, from Access Television, reach 15 million people a week, one way or another, and fund a 10 million dollar a year operation? Literally self-taught. It's not that I'm even that good. It's that people are hungry for the truth. Yes, and you bring a passion to this to these subjects that nobody else does. I can't do it, Alex. I, I think I, that's what people need, though, is we're in deep uh, crap. Yes, you deliver a wake-up call better than anybody else. There's no question about it. You're you're a very gifted communicator, and that, you know, hey, cream rises to the top. Oh, well, you're nice to say that. I mean, I just don't want these people to beat us. I remember, by the way, you know, I used to do radio uh, for a few years, daily, three hours. Oh, I remember, yeah. You remember when, when I retired... Uh, you know, people, the, the affiliates were asking me, like, "Who are we gonna, who are we gonna get to fill your spot?" I go, "Hey, I don't know. I'm, I'm out of here. You worry about that." You know who filled most of those? I remember I got some of those affiliates. Thank <laughs> you. <laughs> and I, did, and I had never really heard of you at that point because they, they were telling me Alex Jones. I go, Alex Jones. I, I didn't know that guy. But that, but uh, see, it shows that we were somewhat compatible even back then. It was oh like, yeah, World Net Daily and Drudge is where mm -hmm. I went. Ten times a day and still do, mm -hmm. you know, every day. And and, it be, and it's good to know you guys are out there because we don't want to be picked off here. And plus, we need the echo chamber, okay? It's so important. I mean, you, you, you break a story. If Drudge isn't there to amplify the story, it can die right on the vine, right? But that echo chamber is so important. We don't get the echo chamber from ABC, CNN, and the rest of them. We have to be our own echo chamber. This is something I've, I've tried to tell, you know, our friends out there in the media. And it's a hard thing. Well, it's our listeners need to know you are the amplifiers. Because, you know, even if Drudge or World Net Daily doesn't link to one of our stories, if you promote it, it ends up then, usually the enemy attacks it, and then that echo chamber is That's it. a good echo chamber. Too. Because they're so discredited. I remember when Rand Paul had just finally won the Senate, and Politico called me, 
and they said, you know, why can't he be defeated? Everything was thrown at him, and the underdog won. And I said, it's because you attacked him. I said, if you want to destroy him, endorse him. <laughs> That's right. And what they don't understand is they're so discredited that when they have Nightline attack me or something, it only helps. That's right. I think the, uh, good evidence of this is what the New York Times did to Clive and Bundy. It was so obvious that a lot of people were able to just see through that. It was so predictable that the New York Times is going to go and try to do something to scandalize this, you know, small guy, this guy who lives very modestly. I mean, if 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 most people went there and saw the way he lives, they wouldn't believe it. It's a caveman. Yeah. Okay. And that's what they did. And but you you know you you read the story and you say. I've seen this movie before. This is what they're going to do. And it's actually a, a great uh, compliment to Bundy that the New York Times saw him as such a threat that they had to kill him, uh, you know. Politically. Right yeah, politically. What would have happened if the owner of the Clippers would have been a Republican? <laughs> That's a great question. Uh. It, well, every Republican in America would be asked on camera to denounce him. And, of course, we see nothing like that. He's a big-time Democrat, as you know, contributed to Gray Davis, who is the reason, by the way, I moved out of California. Gray Davis is the president. Oh, he was horrible. Yeah, and a bunch of others. And so he's got a lifelong Democrat. But what, what else is interesting about this? The history of the Democratic Party and racism. It's well, listen, every time I've been around a high-level Democrat privately, so then I'll never say anything because it's a private you know, dinner or something, they start making racist jokes, and I'm like, I've never heard this in my life from my family. And I'm like, what? Are, did you just say what you just said to me? I mean, you know, no, I'm, I'm being honest. Have you not found that Democrats, on average, are the ones at the higher political level absolutely. that are racist? Absolutely. I mean, I'm trying to imagine, you know, what saying what this guy said. I mean, first of all, the circumstances are so seedy anyway. He's telling his girlfriend, you know, don't bring this guy here. But but the thing is, this is the NBA. These are, everybody's black that's playing, and he's telling them not to bring a black to an NBA game. It's incomprehensible. I know, because I only heard like a minute of it yesterday and thought, oh, more race stuff, I don't want to hear it. And the people go, no, you better listen to it. I listen to the whole thing. It is like, <laughs> it's bizarre. <laughs> it, I mean, it sounds like it's scripted by a Saturday Night Live, you know, uh, writer or something. Have you ever heard libertarians or Republicans talk like that? No, no. I've heard, I've heard, you know, when I was a kid, I've heard family members talk like that, and they were all liberals. <laughs> they were Democrats. <laughs> so it, I think you're absolutely, and you, you know, you go back, what was the Ku Klux Klan? The, the Ku Klux Democratic Klan. Party. Yeah, it, it was, was their military militia. The military arm of the Democratic Party. Why is that association gone for people today? It's not that long ago, you know. And who was fighting against the Voting Rights Act? The Democrats. Democrats. Yeah. So, I mean, it was Eisenhower and the Republicans passing all that and putting the. What party was Martin Luther King's whole family in? The Re Republican Party. I mean, his, his dad, himself, his family were all Republicans. It shows the victory of propaganda, though. Who were the first people that the Ku Klux Klan went after? Black people. Republicans. Exactly. Who were trying to arm them. <laughs> yeah. Well, no, the NRA was founded to arm blacks who were newly freed. Right. You turn on CNBC or MSNBC, they'll literally go, the NRA is the new Klan. Mm -hmm. It's literally the opposite of reality. Yes. And that's so much true of almost everything we see. By the way, since you raised that, I want to play this clip. Uh, this is the Milwaukee County Sheriff, who's black, by the way, but I don't see that. I see a good law enforcement person, a good peace officer. He says, you have a duty to protect your family, campaign ad. They play this at the NRA uh, convention this weekend. And then uh, Sheriff David Clark went on to say... I have a better way of uh, clearing up any confusion. Keep your hands off our guns, damn it. Let's play both those clips back to back. Here they are. I'm Sheriff David Clark, and I want to talk to you about something personal, your safety. It's no longer a spectator sport. I need you in the game. But are you ready? With officers laid off and furloughed, simply calling 911 and waiting is no longer your best option. You can beg for mercy from a violent criminal, hide under the bed, or you can fight back. But are you prepared? Consider taking a certified safety course in handling a firearm so you can defend yourself until we get there. You have a duty to protect yourself and your family. We're partners now. Can I count on you? This safety message brought to you by the Milwaukee County Sheriff's Office.
I have a better way of clearing up any confusion that activist judges have about the meaning of the Second Amendment. I would add these seven words at the end of the clause. The right of the people to keep and bear arms shall not be infringed. Keep your hands off our guns, damn it. Now, see, I don't look at that as a black guy. Mm -hmm. I look at that as somebody who's, who's a real American, loves freedom, who I admire and like. Yeah. And I can't imagine being like this uh, this team owner hanging out with somebody and then talking bad about them behind their back. But, I mean, my whole point is that's the kind of leadership we need. We need a bunch of libertarian folks that are, uh, quote, minorities to run to take this country back from the Democratic Party. Totally with you. I mean, it, you know, you. I believe in what Martin Luther King sought for, which was this colorblind society, you know. Uh, and, you know, we, we look at people, we don't look at the color of the skin, we look at their character, what, what, what they're... What... I'll go hear music, I don't care if the guy's got blue skin. Uh -huh. If I like their music, I could care less. Blue skin, I have a problem no, with. No, but you, they might be dead. <laughs> you know what I mean, rainbow color. No, I mean, exactly, it's what somebody produces. If, if somebody was Chinese and wrote great science fiction books, I'd read it. I'm not even going to care that their name's Chinese. I don't, I don't get it. That's what you're saying. Exactly. And it's, it's odd... But, it, you know, I, I've 